Hey guys, hope you're having a good day. Today we're going to be getting back into the $20 equipment lot with episode 5. This one is a Craftsman 27cc curve shaft attachment capable trimmer. But before we get into this, if you're interested in hearing how we're doing on the whole lot, stay tuned to the end. I'll give you guys a quick update on where we're at, what's sold, and what's left to fix. So back on this, if you remember from the first video, this one had a missing recoil and a socket jammed on the back of it for the uh, previous guy to start with a drill. So full disclosure, I did unsuccessfully try to get this to pop off beforehand with a drill before going to buy a recoil, um, but I don't think my drill was spinning fast enough for it to start, so I just had to bite the bullet. I did get that socket off of there. I picked up a recoil, cheapest I could find was $20. So we're in this 20 before hearing it run, which is really not my preferred method. So we're kind of gambling here. Outside of that, the head is missing a piece which is unavailable. We'll get into a plan for that a little later. I think this has an aftermarket carb, probably needs fuel lines, and I'm sure the gas tank is dirty just like the rest of them were. But uh, let's get this recoil put on here and see if we can hear this run before moving any further. Okay, inside quick to do this recoil, and you can kind of see the damage that was done by putting that, that socket on there and starting it with a drill. The nut that holds this uh, recoil pawl on is kind of stripped out. And I think it's because they used the wrong size socket. This was actually the one that came off of it. It's a 9 16 uh, six point, and uh, it's loose. So it's likely a metric nut. So we're off to a good start here. But the, uh, the recoil is this part number here. You can see that. 7530628290. So we're going to get this opened up. We're going to put this on here. Okay, so in that part number, we got the recoil itself, we got this little spacer, and we've got the, uh, the four screws here, and it looks like they're gonna be a uh, T20. So it looks like this spacer kind of fits on this side. So we just gotta fit this on here, and it looks like it was maybe set up for that spin start thing, and they probably eliminated that. But let's get this, uh, spacer side put on first. Sounds like it's spinning over. Okay, here goes nothing. All right, back inside. Okay, so we really lucked out. I was really taking the gamble that the coil was still good. Uh, it sounds like we're good there, so let's get into the rest of it. So pretty sure this is an aftermarket carb, so let's pull that off first. Yep, that's aftermarket. Usually that marking there is the uh, the sign it's aftermarket, probably like an Amazon carb or something. So hopefully we don't have any issues with this. And the gas tank, I'm going to replace the lines. Oh god, that's filthy. I'm gonna have to put some, I'm gonna put, I usually put old gas in here and just slosh it around and then continue to, to drain it out. But uh, yeah, that's a really bad one too. So, okay, where do we go from here? Let's start with taking the tank off. Just 
T T25s on the bottom of the unit to pull it off. So that'll make it easier to clean up. Move this out of the way and look at the carb. Okay, hopefully the diaphragms aren't bad in this one because I'm not sure the OEM diaphragms actually fit these aftermarket carbs. And if the tank's that dirty, I can only imagine what's going to be in here. It's actually not bad. I think we got lucky there. And that looks clean too. Needle moves. of a funky screw set up here. I'd probably leave this one alone if I knew some history on it, but I want to see if the screen is clear with how much crap is in that tank. Looks like in really good shape. I wonder if he just threw this thing on here and gave up. It's kind of what it looks like. Okay, so we don't foresee any carb issues. I'll get this back together and we'll move to the tank. Purge is good too. Okay, this is gonna be bad. And if you couldn't see it before, really dirty. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pull these lines out of here, fill this with some old gas, and bring you back when I got this clean. Okay, that was one of the more difficult ones I've had to clean, but we're in pretty decent shape now. So we'll get the lines put in. This is the filter that came out of it, so we're not going to be able to reuse that. I've got a decent used one. It's not the best shape, but I don't have this style around. So we'll get the lines put in, get the tank put on the unit, get the car put on, hook the lines up, and that should pretty much wrap up this end of this trimmer. So. Let's get rolling.
Okay, and the air filter, it's borderline. I'm gonna leave it in there. It's kind of starting to crumble. So I probably will get a new one, but we'll use this for, uh, for getting this running. Okay, so I got this thing flipped around here to the business end to talk a little bit about the head. The head that came on it here is the right one for it. It's just missing a black plastic piece that helps hold the line in because this is a fixed length style head. So you would pre-cut your length of line, you would feed that through, and that black plastic piece would help hold that in there. The problem is that part is no longer available as a single piece. You have to buy the entire head kit, and that head kit is like 20 to $25, which it really didn't make sense to me to spend that to just put another fixed length style head on there. So looking at this trimmer, it's actually a MTD built trimmer, and I've got a lot of MTD style attachment heads floating around like this one and this one's actually meant to take the newer style bump feed head and uh, double checking that it fits in the attachment capable part we're actually good there so we're going to go ahead and turn this trimmer into a bump feed i'll get some parts out and we'll show you that first things first you need the cup and then a the little retaining washer that holds the cup on and the cup's actually keyed with that hex on the shaft. And I'm just going to use a socket to press that on there. All right, so good there. Next we need the spring. I'll have to, I'll have to write the part numbers in the description on these or up on the screen. So the spring's next. Then the spool. That's always a fun part. And then we got the bump head or the bump knob. 385906 from Stens. And that just screws in the bottom. If we can get it started. There we go. Okay, so to test it's working, I just push this in. And if it advances, you're good to go. So this trimmer is pretty much good to test. Okay, so we've got some fresh fuel in there. Uh, let's check if it's primed. Yeah, the prime's good. And this one takes the, uh, the Pac-Man. So we'll see if we need to, to mess with that or not, but let's get going. All right, guys, well, that does it for this one. We got a fully functioning trimmer. I think we're in it $40, $50 in parts. 
a lot of those parts I got off clearance, so we're ahead there, but I will likely just be breaking even on this one, which isn't a big deal. At least we got it running. But as far as an update goes on the whole lot, the only thing that is sold is the red Craftsman trimmer I did a few videos ago. Um, everything else is still available, so a little slow start for this spring. But the only things that are left are this blower and this trimmer. The uh, trimmer, kind of a lost cause. I'm not even going to start on it. There's so much stuff missing off of it that I'd be in it more than it's worth in just parts before I even hear it run. And the blower is actually locked up, which is unfortunate. But I might do a, a last video on this one, just trying to get it unstuck as a challenge, but I don't have high hopes for it. But yeah, thanks for, uh, for joining me on this adventure, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.